All right, we want to say greetings to everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us today. My name is Brother Hawk Bolden, and I'm so grateful to the Lord to be able to come before you and share with you uh, what he has laid on my heart to share today. Um, <clears throat> so today we're going to respond to a prayer request and pray for this individual and this her and her husband. And then we're going to answer a question that uh, someone had sent us. All right. So in this email, uh, she says, hello. And she gives what her name is. She says she was watching our, U our teaching on spirit spouses on YouTube and was writing to ask if you could please pray for my husband and I to be delivered from spirit spouses. I really believe this is what is operating in us and our marriage. I had a dream about a strange woman following him and I, and she was trying to push herself on him. Could you please pray that God deliver us from these spirits and that he would heal us and make us 100% whole? Thanks and God bless you. And so um, we're going to pray uh, for this young lady. Uh, and her husband. Um, hopefully we'll get to talk with her soon um, to uh, be able to, you know, get some more details about this situation. But we're going to pray with her and uh, ask the Lord to help her in this situation. Amen. All right, I'm trying to wait on my phone to reconnect. All right, so we're back. <laughs> okay. So, uh, we're going to pray with this lady about this spirit spouse. Thank you all for being patient. We're going to pray with her about this spirit spouse and some of you, if you've experienced the same thing. Uh, again, if you want to know the details of what, of what it really is, uh, you can go and listen to our message that we preached on that. And, uh, you know, on YouTube, it's, I put it up on YouTube and it will explain in better terms what it is. And some people are dealing with it and have no idea that they are dealing with it. So this is, it's called a, a spiritual spouse. Really what it is, it's the strong man that's, that's a person is dealing with. Uh, if you know anything about demons and spirits that come to, uh, possess people, they are po they are possessive. They're not only just possess possessing the person, but they are possessive. In other words, uh, they are jealous and they don't want to share. You know, so if it's a strong man there, they, which is why, if, especially if a couple is married, somebody is married, and uh, they have a spouse, uh, that spirit will cause them to turn on that other spouse because that spirit is jealous and uh, it wants this person to itself so we're going to pray for uh, these people and ask the lord to help them so if you had so uh let's bow our heads and pray dear lord we thank you for this day we thank you for coming uh and, and helping us as you do on a daily basis god we pray and we lift up these this family to you this husband and wife and we ask, Lord, that you will help them, that you will reveal to them any doors that may be open, that you will uh, show them how to close doors that need to be closed. Lord, I ask that you will give them wisdom in how to protect their marriage, how to uh, continue to love one another as husband and wife, how to be watchful for the tricks and tactics of the enemy. And God, I pray also that you will remove that spirit that's causing the issues in their marriage that's following them around to attach itself to them. God, I thank you for showing uh, this lady what was going on. And I pray, Lord, that you will honor her faith that she has reached out for prayer. I ask that you will honor her faith, Lord, and, and uh, give her the desires of her heart, Lord, to remove that 
that spirit that's bothering her marriage and her husband and herself. And God, we thank you for your power and your glory, and not only for this family, but for others as well. Any family, Lord, that's dealing with a spirit spouse that is reaching out by faith to receive a deliverance, I ask that you will grant it in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray. Amen. All right. All right. So now uh, we I want to read a, a text message that I received from a brother. Uh, um, he says, Paul writes that a woman should be saved by childbearing. What about women who are unable to bear children? What about what happens to them? Now, let's, let me share. So, and he's talking about the scripture. So if you have your Bibles, go to the uh, first, uh, second chapter of 1 Timothy. And we're going to go with that scripture, that group of scriptures, just real briefly. Um, and, and share what, what that is talking about. You know, that's that that scripture there is 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 not the easiest to understand. It take really takes the revelation of God, and of course, um, um, being uh, just led by the Spirit of God and things. So, the second chapter, First Timothy, and we have to read, you know, all of the scriptures that go with it, so that you can get a better understanding. He he's, he asked the question. Paul writes that a woman should be saved by childbearing. What about women who are unable to bear children? What about, you know, what happens to them? So, you know, there have been some people who believe, according to that this scripture is saying that basically a woman is saved by having children. And that's not what it's necessarily talking about. Um, so, but when we explain this, you'll understand better. So the second chapter of 1 Timothy, we're going to start reading at verse 9. It says, in like manner also that women are adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broaded hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. So he's talking about how women should dress, how they should keep themselves modestly. They should be modest. In other words, uh, some, some, some women, when they dress up, they dress up for attention. And Paul is saying that attention, you should not be doing that. You should not be seeking attention. You shouldn't be really wearing anything that's going to draw a lot of attention to yourself. It's basically what he's saying there, it, that, which is why he's saying in modest apparel with shamefacedness. In other words, you're not, you're not walking around with this proud look and, you know, just just the different things that that uh, some women deal with, especially if they are dealing with any type of spirit of rejection, and they're trying to over, you know, compensate for that. So let's go and keep reading verse eleven. Let the women learn in silence, with all subjection. So that's that's saying that women should not teach the word of God. You see that? Look at what he says. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. So, according to this word, now I know some folks have a problem with that, but God means what he says. Uh, it is not the job of a woman to teach the word of God. You see that? It's not her job. You know, so Paul says that, that he don't suffer a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man. That means that she's not to be in positions over men. She's not to be... Uh, pastor, she's not, she can't be an apostle or anything that she has to have authority over a man, especially in the church. Uh, she's not to have those positions because she's supposed to learn in silence. Let's go ahead and keep reading. And he tells why. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And so some people will say, well, that was, you know, and I've, I've heard and talked with people that say, oh, that was for back then. You got to read it and context and you know that was no that's no paul received the revelation for the new covenant and if it was the old covenant he would have made that clear but he's saying this this revelation was given to him for the new covenant and 
there is there there are only two covenants the old covenant and new covenant so which one are you living in you see there there's not there's not a third covenant there well from paul's day to this we're living in a new covenant so it's for this time you see that and so a lot of women uh they have an issue with it and men as well i've ran into those they have an issue with this because of the times that we're living in as far as well that 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 feminine spirit is very prevalent in the church today but god does not change he meant what he said you see that 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 a woman is not to teach he's talking about the word of god nor to use her authority over the man it doesn't mean that a woman can get up and speak what the lord lays on her heart as far as maybe prophesying but she is there is a difference between teaching the word of god and prophesying in other words speaking what god lays on your heart to speak you see that so it says for adam was first formed then eve and adam was not deceived but the woman being deceived was in the transgression so that makes it clear from the jump from the very beginning we see who was deceived it was eve eve was deceived you know the devil was able to come and talk her right out of believing what god had pronounced and what god had proclaimed and so because of this and it, paul is showing here why she should not be up teaching nor usurping authority all right verse 15 notwithstanding she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety you see that and so when you couple what we just read with you know with the woman learning and learning in silence and being uh with all subjection and not teaching and you suffer in other words basically what paul is saying is a woman will be saved when she remain in her place in other words that when she be what god have called her to be that's what helps her in her salvation in other words part of a part of her salvation is her remaining in her place god have called her to bear children in other words he's using this term childbearing but in reality what he's saying is just her being in her place god have placed her here to bring children into this world to love her husband in fact let's go look at that the fifth chapter of the book of the same of uh, uh, the fifth chapter of the book of first timothy the fifth chapter of the book of of uh first timothy and he he brings more to light what he's talking about here so the fifth chapter of the book of of uh first timothy we're going to start reading at verse 11 it says but the younger widows refuse for when they have begun to wax wanton against christ they will marry having damnation because they have cast off their first faith in other words there are some people there are some women who they're more concerned with being married than they are following Jesus Christ. They have a desire for marriage, but what happens a lot of times is that desire becomes perverted and they're more concerned with having a husband than they are um, following the Lord Jesus Christ. You see that? So let's go and keep reading. Verse 12, having damnation because they have cast off their first faith and withal they learn to be idle wandering about from house to house and not only idle but tattlers also and busybodies speaking things which they ought not in other words they when a woman is not um doing what god have called her to do as far as being a wife a mother or at least learning these things and keeping the home when she get outside the home she learns to be idle in other words empty minded she take on all of these different things that has nothing to do with who God have created her to be. And it, it, it's a perverted mindset. So look, read verse 14, what he, he explains, what he's talking about. I will therefore that the younger women marry. You see that? Now that's, that, that's, that's the Lord speaking. The younger women marry and what do they do? Bear children. Just like what he said in, in the second chapter of the same book, guide the house give none occasion to the adversary to speak repro reproachfully you see that and so that is what he's talking about salvation now he's not he's saying a, for a woman to be saved 
she has to at least know her place and what God have called her to do and work on that and do that. We're not saying that women can't have careers. That's, you know, that's up to them. But their first job, you see, that is to marry, bear children, and guide the house. Why do you think the feminist movement is so dead set against um, that? You know, the feminist movement is dead set. It's like if a woman bear a child and, and guide the house and love her husband, and that, that's, that's just wrong in the feminist movement mindset. There was a, a prayer group. I can't remember now the, the name. Oh, I think it was Promise Keepers. They met in Washington, D.C. a couple of decades ago to pray. And it was just men who had come together to make a covenant with God. It was thousands and thousands of men who had come together of all, you know, Christian faith. Come together to make a covenant with God that they would be better husbands and fathers. And, you know, to their children and husbands to their wives. And you would think that the women of this country would uh, applaud that uh, because they they made a decision to be better husbands and fathers. But I remember when watching the news footage, I remember seeing there was a big old group of women who were protesting, basically letting them know we're not going back to the kitchen. We're not we're not going back in the home to do, you know, to be your slaves. I mean, they just chanting all kind of things, you know. So here's the thing. The feminist movement is directly against what God have called men to do. Some of you women, you you claim that you want your husband saved. But if you check yourself deep down inside, you don't want to save the husband because you know that one means he would know his place. And when he knows his place, he'd be quick to put you in yours. You see that? So you benefit, you know, naturally so. You know, you love the fact, in reality, some of you, you love the fact that your husband is not is not in the place where he's supposed to be spiritually because it means you get to be all over the place. You get to be wherever you want to be. But as soon as that husband knows who he is in God and he walks in who, in who God has called him to be and he starts trying to put his foot down, then you got a problem. You see that? Then you got a problem. Now, I'm telling you, I know this firsthand. It's, 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 some of you women, you don't want a saved husband. You don't you don't want to save the husband at all. You, you just, you know, you ultimately benefit naturally so from him being out of his place, because if he don't know his place, he might not know yours. You see that? And so <laughs> so the feminist movement, it is against the godly family. It is against what God's values are, or what his word says, or what women should do. Look at what it says there. In verse 14, it says, I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. You see that? Why? Because even the world knows, you know, that of how a Christian woman should be. And, and so, and really how a woman should be, you know. And for whatever reason, people have adopted this mindset that a woman that's having children that is guiding her house, that is married, she's weak, you know. And so some of you, the devil gets you tripped up because he placed some hurt on your life, you know, um, in bad relationships. And then when you do get married, you're vowing to be strong. And in your mind, strength is not letting anybody run over, not, not, not letting a man run over you. Uh, so you say, you know, that which is to me the craziest thing, not being his slave, you know, and, and I've heard people say that. Well, you know, you ain't supposed to be, the wife ain't supposed to be the husband's slave. But you, but you know what, I'm going to tell you something. You will go to work and slave. You don't go to work with that mindset and say, you know, that the, that you know, my boss ain't, he's not my boss. And some of you women, you have more respect for your, your boss than you do your husband, who's really your boss. Now, you, you know, it's, it's something wrong with that mentality. And so the Lord is saying, part of your salvation is you being in the place that you're supposed to be. You being what God have created you to do. He's created you to be married. He's created you to bear children and to keep the house. Part of the reason why we got so many, that's the reason why we got so much juvenile junk going on now with all these children just running all over the place and not, you know, just all this rebellion going on. The devil started at the marriage. We're going to tear that up. 
You see, we'll, we'll separate husband and wife. We'll get the wife trying to lord it over the husband and the husband not knowing his place and just allowing it to go on just to keep peace. And that's confusion. And then the children grow up seeing that confusion. And of course, they're all out of order. And it's amazing to me that the wife wants the children to be in order and the husband wants the children to be in order, but neither one of them want to be in order. You see that? And what order am I talking about? God's order. It is God's order for the husband to, to have to be to have rule over the wife. And I said that rule over the wife. That is his job is to have rule over her. He is her head. Not only does he live by example, but he is her head. You see, so that it is that's God's will and it's God's will for the wife to submit to the husband, for her to have children and for her to keep the home and to guide the home. You see that that is God's will. And I'm telling you, there is a real spirit out there that's got these women and some of these men who have been corrupted thinking that that husband and wife are equals. That husband, you know, that husband should not have a say so and that the wife, whatever she says goes. And that's not Bible. And it is impossible for you to be saved and not know your position and not know your place and not operate in your place. I don't care how modern you are. God is the same and he does not change. You see that? And so that's why Paul said what he said. You'll be saved when you when you know your place. Part of you, your salvation is knowing your place. You see, that's that's what he's saying. There, there's not going to be one woman with a Jezebel spirit in heaven. There's not going to be one feminist spirit in heaven. It it just won't happen. You see that? Now, you might not know any better when you first get saved, but I'm telling you, as you grow in the Lord and you begin to be discipled in the Lord, you'll take on your place. You, the Lord will show you, I promise you. He will reveal to you what your place is. And he intends for you to follow that. You see that? That's your job. And, and today we got a bunch of women that it seem like to me don't want to have anything to do with children. Even if they have children, they don't want to. It's like they don't want to spend time. They, it's like children to them are a burden. That's not. It's something twisted in your mind when you'd rather be out working than, than at home with your children. That's it. That is perverted. You'd rather be out working than working to instill some values in your children. That, it, that is perverted. That's laziness. Now, you done had babies. You bring them up in the admonition of the Lord and do it right. You see that? There's something wrong with that. It, it, there's a reason why the Bible says that the woman is to guide the house. In other words, she set the atmosphere. She should be pouring into those children. You see that? She keeps the home. It should be clean. All of those things. There's something wrong. We have a whole society of people who, who don't mind just dumping their children off on other people. Who don't mind not, you know, especially even women. That's And that's not even in your nature to, to do that. To just, you'd rather be working than at home with your children. You see, it's something you need to ask God to renew your mind about it and show you how perverted that is. You leave children to themselves, what do you think is going to happen to them? They're going to be all over the place, just like you are. You see that? And so that's not God's will. God's will is for you to marry, to bear children, and to guide the house. In other words, to guide them. Well, we have folks today just perverted, you know, babysitters. I mean, people, the young women would drop their children off at babysitters so that they can go out clubbing, so they can go out, hang out. No, you done done all the hanging out you need to do. You need to be at home. You're a single mama, you need to be at home. Watch some children. Not saying that you shouldn't work. I'm saying you 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 should be investing in those children. And I'm not talking about being overboard with it and spoiling them and making them think that they're the center of the world. I just mean guiding them. That's what the word is talking about. You see that? You you should be out trying to figure out how to make more babies when especially if you're single. You see that? You, you don't need to be worried about clubbing. And, but that's what Paul is talking about. Idle busybodies. 
just some some women they they not happy unless they out in the street. It's like home to them. That's just prison. That that ought to show you that that's a spirit. When when you depressed at home because you at home, that's you know with all the chaos going on in the world, you want to be a part of all of that. It's not God's will. And so what basically Paul is saying here is that. When women are that way, there's a spirit present that needs to be dealt with. You're not going to be saved dealing, you know, being a busybody. Just, you, you just can't be quiet and be still for a little while. And even if you are a at-home mother, even if you are at home, you ought to learn how to be still. You know, and quick, I mean, that there are some women, they don't, they're not happy unless they're doing something. They got to be doing something and didn't wonder why they were hardly hearing from the Lord. You think the Lord's talking to people that's up and too busy to hear and too busy to listen? Some of you, even you, in your nature, when you're talking to someone, you would rather have their undivided attention. How much more so God, your creator, want to have your undivided attention, you see? So learn to be still. Don't, don't. Be idle. Learn to be still, you know, and not tattlers and busybodies. You see, a lot of times people, when they read busybodies, they're thinking about gossip. That's not necessarily what that's talking about. That's just talking about a body that's busy, a, 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 a woman that's just all over the place. She got to be doing something, got to be going on vacation, got to go to the store, got to do this, got to do that. And never, none of it has to do with the home. She just got to be busy. You see that? That's not God's will. God is sharing what it's going to take for that woman to be saved. She need to have a mindset of what God has put her in this earth to do. To be married, to bear children, to guide the house, and not to give an occasion to the enemy. You see that? To, to speak reproachfully. That's God's will to, to, for that woman. My prayers is that your understanding have been open and that you will follow what the Lord have spoken this morning. Amen. So we want to say thank you all for joining us today. I pray that something was said that has blessed you and we look forward to sharing more of God's word with you. Have a blessed day.